It's Thursday, March the 19th, at a little after uh, 1 a.m. in the morning. And uh, it's been a few years since I did this kind of talk, sort of autobiography, uh, what's up with me type thing. Um, nothing major that I want to report. I just uh, figured I would do some talking about some stuff. Um, especially uh, in this time of uh, uh, the coronavirus and uh, everyone somewhat uh, socially distant from each other. Uh, and I've been doing some, some thinking about things and wanted to answer a couple of questions that uh, I've been asked. Uh, not necessarily in any particular order, and I won't necessarily get to the answers right away, but the questions were along the lines of, why Moncton? Why did we move to Moncton, New Brunswick, out in Atlantic Canada? So that's one of the things. Um, the other one is, uh, what's up with music? And then the third question was, uh, what's up with photography? Where did that come from, for me? <laughs> so um, I need to go back, I think, in time as I like to do, um, really 2009, it's 2020 now, so 11 years ago, right around this time, March break, um, I took my first trip out to Jakarta and uh, that was to meet Dini and to look for a potential job uh, that I could get there because I was interested in, in moving there for a while, I thought, um, and I needed to work, and I needed a change from what was happening for me in teaching in London, Ontario. So I took the flight out to Jakarta from London and met Dini, and everything went very well, and I got the job uh, that I was uh, applying for, which was a science teacher at uh, an international uh, school teaching teaching science in English, not in Indonesian language, uh, fortunately for me. And, um, and that's what I did. And uh, I came back to Canada, and then in the summer, um, I packed up the townhouse that I was renting in London, and I sold my car. I had a, a really cool RX-8 back then that I had, uh, had modified and uh, changed the exhaust and the... Um, the um, shifter and shifted the windows and got a nice spoiler or wing for it and a bunch of other things and I moved out there and I shipped all my stuff now you know I was rather naive uh, thinking you know look I'm just going to stay there forever you know I needed to escape from Canada and what I was you know experiencing uh, here um, and so I did that for a while uh, and then, um, you know, I, I came back to Canada after I, I taught there for a year. I stayed for a year and that, and I had had enough. I wanted to come back to Canada. I mean, you know, I lived in Canada all my life, uh, pretty much. Um, but the interesting thing was, uh, before I left Jakarta, I had arranged to get another RX-8. So I did that online with my Mazda dealership in London. And uh, the, uh, the day that I arrived back in London from Jakarta, Dini wasn't able to come with me. We were married by then, but we were still working out the permanent residence situation. And uh, I picked up my new RX-8, which was the RX-8 R3. And the thing about that car that I loved was, um, you know, it, it, it certainly wasn't the most powerful car wasn't the most expensive car, it wasn't the most luxurious car, but it was uh, a novel sports car and it was not that common. Yeah, the the silver standard, <laughs> you know, stock model was, but the black R3 uh, with modifications that I got done was pretty rare. And so, you know, the kids liked it. They thought it was a Batmobile, you know, I mean, just kids at high school and 
you know, all on the street kind of thing. They go, wow, that's cool. I think they probably thought it was cooler than a Porsche or a BMW, and it was at a fraction of the cost. Of course, that car did not last very long with me. It was very expensive, and uh, by the time uh, uh, Deanie came back to Canada, um, I had gotten our first house, okay? So it's uh, 2010 we got into the house. And um, I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I just if I just backtrack just a little bit before that about getting the house, um, I guess I, I don't know why. I had never thought of buying my own house, uh, especially when I was a single guy. Um, I probably should have. I probably would be in a better situation than I am. Um, but I didn't. I spent whatever money I had on buying music gear and, you know, a cool sports car and leather jackets and um, science ties and stuff like that. But before we got the house, um, I was living in a townhouse, another townhouse on Hamilton Road in London with Dini. And fortunately, she was back in Indonesia because she had been here uh, on a visitor visa uh, and while we were waiting for the permanent residence thing to come through and I got robbed and I had never been robbed before I guess it was my time though uh, the problem was that uh, that the townhouse I was staying the garage door which was attached to the house and there was entry from the garage would freeze up in the winter time and I, I, uh, I, I had a hell of a time getting up, going to work at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, trying to open the garage, trying to close the garage. And so I started to get into the habit of periodically leaving it up, either a little, just a little bit or halfway or whatever. And so um, I believe it was on my birthday. How about that for birthday gift? January 8th, I think of 2010 Dini's back in Jakarta I'm at work teaching at Central and then I got a call from the police okay it wasn't my first call from the police but and then I was told that uh, there'd been a breaking and entry at my place I guess someone had reported it and um, yeah so I uh, I went home and found out that my place had been broken into they had kicked in the garage door went into the garage kicked in the garage door and what was taken was my black ovation I also lost a Fender Stratocaster this was a, a sort of a special Strat because it had a MIDI pickup and I had bought that guitar with a um, guitar synthesizer the, GR, the Roland GR33 so I could play piano and sax and all kinds of weird stuff on the electric guitar through the synthesizer, the GR33. So they had ripped out the guitar and taken the Ovation, the Fender Strat. They had taken my laptop, which was on the dining room table with all my teaching stuff and PowerPoints and Flash and tests and stuff. They took a digital camera. They took the flat screen TV that I bought for Dini and a few other items. What they left me, because like they just couldn't carry it all, was the 25th anniversary Seagull guitar. That, y if you go back to my I'm Not In Love guitar tutorial, the Mandy song that I just posted, and this is kind of why I thought of doing this, because Danny uh, Endicott had said something about uh, my dog Mandy. I think it was Danny, it might have been Philip. And then I... Um, I posted the Mandy song, and thank you guys for checking that out. And that was done on the Seagull. That's because I lost the ovation. And so for a short period of time, I recorded only on the Seagull. And I didn't do that much because I was obviously rather depressed losing the ovation. And the other sad thing was I didn't have insurance. You know, back in, in those days, I guess I had money, but I... You know, I was I uh, just came back from Jakarta, and uh, you know, I lost a lot of money in that whole ordeal, and so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have it. So the ovation was gone, and I was crushed. 
And so I went into a depression. Um, but I was working on getting Dini over here to Canada. And I knew that I had, it wasn't safe there. In fact, when Dini first uh, came over to visit, you know, she was surprised we didn't have bars on the windows and stuff because, you know, there's a lot of population over there and some people not doing so well and taking advantage of others. And so there's some crime. And so, um, yeah, I was like, you know, we don't have bars over here. We don't have to worry about stuff like that. And then look what happened. So fortunately, she wasn't around uh, during the, the break-in. She was back in Jakarta. So I knew that I was going to get a house. We had to move out of Hamilton Road there, that townhouse, and get our own place. And so we did. We moved to Banbury in Pond Mills area, London, Ontario. And I'm back teaching okay no ovation um i guess i did a little bit of recording with the seagull i never liked that guitar in fact the story goes uh when i was looking for guitars um i bought that one before the ovation the ovation's pretty expensive that one was a fraction of the cost it wasn't a cheap guitar but um you know it wasn't like the ovation and uh I played a bunch of guitars, and uh, I did. I bought it, and then the next day I didn't like it. I realized I made a mistake, and I went back to try to return it. But it was one of these sort of mom and pop music stores, and they wouldn't take it back. So I was stuck with it. A lot of people commented on that guitar how much they like it, but if you knew it, uh, you probably wouldn't like it. Anyways, like many of my pieces of musical equipment, that stuff is long gone. You know. You get stuff and you sell it, you know, to for food or gas or rent, whatever. I've been through so much stuff. It's not funny. Anyways, uh, we moved to this house, uh, Banbury, my first house. It was nothing special, but it was mine for as long as I could hold on to it. And uh, Dini came over and I would go to work and uh, you know she uh, was pretty much stuck here with no family and uh, ability to get around really and not much to do and so she was probably lonely now we did take up blender now I had had some experience with blender before 3d modeling and with Lightwave before that and Bryce 3d before that uh, and then one day I said, hey, you know, there's this thing called Blender and it's free. And so she got into it and so she started modeling stuff. I think I was pretty busy with uh, with teaching and so I didn't really do much with it at the time. So she got good at it. But uh, she was she was lonely, you know, with her family and stuff. And so we decided to get a dog and we got Mandy. And the funny thing is about Mandy, now that I think about it, who was sleeping right back there on the chair, you may even hear her snore. She may get up and move there. Can you see her? I don't know. Anyways, Mandy was born and lived uh, on Briar Hill, right across the street from the townhouse that I was living in uh, when I first met Dini and when I went over on the March break. Mandy was right across the street at the townhouse and I knew the owners but I didn't know that they had dogs probably shouldn't have had dogs like that breeding dogs whatever in their townhouse but so when I you know was searching for for her on Kijiji and I found her and I said this is this is the one I want uh, I found out it was from my neighbors uh, went over picked up Mandy I remember it was a rainy night Mandy was this big and we brought her back to uh, to our place. Anyhow, um, of course, as the years uh, went by, and not too many years, we decided Mandy needed some company. And there she goes. She hears her voice. She's like, why are you talking about me? And so uh, I searched Kijiji for another. And we wanted a Jack Russell girl. And then we found one out on a farm out near London. And we got Molly. And as if that wasn't enough, I don't know. Along came Abby. I don't. I don't know why we did the third, the third one. I think, you know, you get into a routine of um, day in, day out stuff, and you know, you you need a change, some kind of a change. The problem is these are such drastic, long-lasting changes. Um, so, anyways, we ended up there. She goes, yeah with the three Jack Russell girls.
from the three dogs, and I wouldn't take it back if I if I could. Of course, I love them all. All right, so here we are. The street is called Banbury, and we're living in that house. And they got the, we got the three dogs, and um, you know, I'm teaching, and on the weekends, I'm doing music. Deanie is too. We got we did a lot of uh, songs there. And I did a lot of extra work for teaching. Now, by that time, you know, it had built up. The teaching thing had built up quite a bit for me because, you know, I went back to school when I was 22, 23. I finished my high school and then I did my honors BSc. That was four years. And then I took some graduate courses and then I got into teacher's college and I moved out to London and uh, I, I did the one year you know, teaching thing. I got my degree in teaching. And then that very summer that I graduated from teacher's college, I taught summer school. I got a job teaching summer school. I was back in Ottawa. So I was busy. All right. And then I had my job set up for September. I had gotten a full-time job right at teacher's college starting in September at Central, where I stayed for 25 years. But during the first five years, I taught night school every year and summer school and full-time teaching you'd think i'd be loaded uh, you know but so i was busy and i had, uh, and before that i had been through what i had been through with the gigging and uh you know all the crazy stuff that i did so you know it it uh it was tiring and uh, physically and emotionally psychologically and I think deep down inside, I was never truly happy at, you know, teaching. I mean, I, I did it. I worked very hard and I think I did a good job because I, I don't want to do things not well if I can help it, if it's something that's important. Um, and so I was tired and, um, and I think I was frustrated that I had never um, more seriously uh, pursued uh, music in, you know, my adult life. You know, I think I would have, I should have been a musician. Maybe, I don't know. Ended up as a teacher. Well, I call myself a musician on the side. We'll talk about, a bit more about music in a bit. But, um, so anyways, uh, my point simply is that, um, you know, I did my 25 years of teaching. I know there are people that stay for 30 years, 35 years, 40 years. That, that's not, that's not in my DNA. There's no way. And so I needed to get out. Um, and so I um, was searching for a place to live <laughs> that I could afford um, for me and Deanie and three dogs. And then we found out we're pregnant with Lily. And I needed a place to live that I could afford. Um, and I was... London had too many memories of teaching. Everywhere I went... Students would say, hey, Mr. Kimmel, blah, 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 blah. You know, every mall, every Tim Hortons drive through every McDonald's, uh, every park. I didn't mind that by any means. But, I mean, I was always on guard. You know, you have to keep up your, you know, composure and your behavior and, um, you know, your uh, interactions to a certain level. And uh, that's fine. But, um, yeah, I was done with the teaching. And so I'm looking for a place to live for us you know because it's a pretty much a one income family and then lily's coming and so i you know i did some searching and said hey new brunswick new brunswick looks like it's more affordable um and so at that point um we had were able to sell our house our house sold the first day that it was shown and we got a little bit more than we were asking for and uh, what was the deal? I had gotten out of the RX-8 into a Jeep because we thought it'd be a little bit more affordable and try something different. In retrospect, should have kept paying the RX-8, paid it off and kept that cool car. But uh, we got a Jeep. That actually helped because I was able to hitch up a U-Haul and when the school year finished, I said, I'm done with teaching give me my pension now, <laughs> sell the house, hook up the U-Haul to the Jeep, and then I drove out 
east. Never been out here, Atlantic Canada. Long drive, Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, down uh, Trans-Canada Highway. I had set up a place to live, and it was going to be just a little over $800, I think $900 a month for a house uh, in Moncton. Now, uh, we wanted somewhere somewhat populated, a bit city-ish at first, and... Um, it, you know, there wasn't a million places available. I mean, there were a lot of places available, but some of them were like right in downtown and they were not, you know, I mean, I've lived everywhere. So I wanted something that was a little bit on the outskirts, a little bit of privacy. I got three dogs. Will they take, you know, is it pet friendly? And all these things. Uh, so that's where we ended up. So, you know, we drive. It's, um, I guess, uh, July. It's Raldini's birthday. And we arrive in Moncton. The key is in the door. They're very trusting out here, okay? And uh, and we moved in, and we stayed at this house on Mapleton Road. Um, at that time, I should tell you that the ovation had come back to me, in case I skipped that earlier, right? It came back to me a year after it was stolen. I got another call from the police because I had reported the serial number. At least I did that right. Somebody tried to pawn it, they grabbed the guitar, I got the guitar back. How about that? And they're sitting in the back. Now it's been to the pawn shop a few times, I will admit that, okay? When we have to eat or we need diapers or whatever. All my guitars, all my stuff, I do whatever I can, all right? And, you know, um, it came back. Uh, so, when we got out to Moncton, before Lily was born, Lily was born in January of 2017. We're there in July, August of 2016. Uh, I did some more music, and I did. Uh, I wrote some some more songs, and uh, I recorded some. Took a lot of uh, walks with the dogs. We found some some cool places to go. I, I started vlogging with my uh, cell phone and uh, stuff like that. And uh, that's where we were. And then Lily was born in January, January 12th of 2017 at the Moncton Hospital. And uh, I didn't ever uh, sleep after that. It's never, I've uh, never slept. Not really. Um, it's now been over three years. And uh, I've seen Lily every day. Uh, I've been with Lily every day, uh, almost all day, and been available every night. There was one night, one night, for Deanie, not for me, back in Moncton in February or so. I think Lily had just turned, uh, what should, wait a second, let me think for a second. Yeah, I know. I think it was the year later. Because we stayed, we stayed there in Moncton from about July of 2016 to July 2017. Okay, so I take it back. So Lily's only a couple months old. Maybe it's March. And it's very stressful for uh, both of us, Dini and myself. And so we said, look, why don't you go to the hotel, you know, and have a nice night of of uh, watching all kinds of TV, Pawn Stars, or Pawn Shot, whatever it was, and, you know, any reality TV and, and all that stuff. And take it easy at the hotel. I'll, I'll watch the home front. And it was that night that they came for the Jeep. And they took the Jeep away from me. I won't get into that story, but... And that was it. <clears throat> took a taxi down to get her the next day, you know, with, and, uh, with Lily in the taxi. We'll come back. And then, you know, we uh, managed to figure out another car from then. The Jeep's gone, the RX-8's gone, all kinds of stuff is gone. I'm going down. But um, I've been down before, and I have to get back up. And uh, people have helped me. I'm lucky for that. I've helped myself a hell of a lot, too. Um, so, we got Lily. And it never was the same. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm older, I'm tired, but, uh, you know, 
kids? What are you going to do? And so we started to think, you know, look, um, we got Lily now and uh, it's very expensive here. We thought the heating was very expensive. It was propane heat and it was more expensive. So nothing like what's happening to us now, though. So we moved from Moncton to a little farmhouse. I guess you could call it on 27 acres out in the middle of nowhere in St. Paul, New Brunswick. Population 37. No kids. No school. No daycare. Uh, one convenience store with two gas pumps and that's it why did we do it because the rent was cheaper a couple hundred dollars uh it was heated mostly by wood figured all you got to do is chop wood put it in hey you know this is going to work oh look at the lands we saw the pictures on kijiji in the summertime it was beautiful and the dogs could roam free and it was privacy turns out we uh uh, we got we bargained for I mean, whatever the expression is we got more than we bargained for uh, it was tough it was tough it was real country living and I know that the you know the people that rented to us are, are used to that Dini certainly isn't she's from Jakarta and I'm from Ottawa and London we're city people uh, Moncton was about as laid back as we wanted to get but we tried it and we lived there for a year and during that time um we decided that that uh lily needed um a brother or a sister and then you know harry was conceived um and then we knew we needed to get out of there and get to a more reasonable place for for harry and we're still going you know and for lily and for us and so we started searching for another place that we could live that we could afford you know and nothing is cheap but it's cheaper out here in atlantic canada than in london or god forbid ottawa we'd love to go there but this, this is not possible and so we found a place uh in the village of neguac New Brunswick. Yeah, I know. I'd never heard of it before, and you've never heard of it. Um, but at any rate, um, there was a, a house available, and it was the only place that worked out for us. Okay, I tried a bunch of different things, and I, I just like there was nothing for us that would take pets and a couple of kids and be a separate house with a bit of a bit of land. That wasn't uh, with a chain link fence in the corner of a confectionery downtown. With it would be terrible. So, anyways, you know, rent's only a little over eight hundred dollars. You're probably hearing this and going, Are you "Serious? You can rent a place for that? Yeah, you can out here, but you're gonna pay for the heat. Oh yeah, your rent will end up being twelve, thirteen hundred a month with the with the extra heat and or more, definitely. Um. So uh, that's what we did. Move again. Moncton, St. Paul, Neguac, Hamilton, from I moved so many times. Anyways, here we are paying our landlord. And um, we moved We moved here. Now, the difference about this place was, although it's a, a village, it was bigger than St. Paul. And it had a Tim Hortons right here and a fresh mart right here and a drugstore a lot of things that we didn't have in st paul yeah there's way more in moncton but uh we were out of moncton by this time and so here we are but now we got two kids and three dogs and i'm pushing 58 years old now Dini's getting older and uh like i said i haven't slept in in over three years now of course i've slept uh here and there sometimes on that couch on my graveyard shift but i've been doing the graveyard shift for over a year now that's that's my job now i'm up from midnight to 9 10 in the morning try to sleep after that for like an hour and a half i can't lily's running around I just close my eyes rinse and repeat do it again but um you know it's the sacrifice one of the sacrifices you need to do and so i do it so all my work, my modeling, 
my lesson planning for the dairy farmers of Ontario. It's all done between 12 midnight and 6 a.m. All right, I'm a night owl now. And then in the daytime, I'm awake too, watching kids, taking care of dogs, trying to get stuff done, keep everybody alive. So uh, that's kind of why we, we went to Moncton. As far as the music goes, um, Deanie's been able to do a little bit. It's very hard with the two kids. I mean, when we just had Lily, I think I did a couple songs. I did Painted Ladies, I did Lonely Sky. I might have done one more. I can't really seriously do music, all right? Um, music is very, I don't want to say it's very emotional, but that's kind of how it is. Like it's, 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 it's psychological, emotional. I have to really do it. I, I, I can't just, I'm just going to record, blah, blah, blah. Like, I could do it. I could probably get away with it. But it's a very strong tie for me. There's a lot of emotions and memories and stuff tied up with it. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to say I'm a perfectionist. Not that anything I do is perfect. You know, I strive for that anyhow. You know, and so I just haven't been able to do it. I can't bring myself, and there really is no time. There's not a chance that I can uh, record. Like, first of all, I got all my equipment down here in the in the living room. There's no room anywhere else for me to have all my stuff and Deanie to have all her stuff. So even if there was, what am I going to do? Like, leave them for two, three hours? It's not going to work. Not really. Uh, and that, that nothing takes me one day to do. I gotta mix it and edit it and stuff and sing it a bunch of times and comp it together and do harmonies and all that. So music has really been put on the back burner. And the plan is, of course, in a couple years, uh, when we can move back to the city like normal people and live in Moncton, that's probably what we're gonna end up doing and Lily goes to school, or when Lily and Harry go to school, that'll open up time for, for the music. So I just, I just can't really uh, do it, not to any extent that I would like to do it. So I found other things to do, right? And you've seen that. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I've never been much of a, of a graphic artist, although I enjoyed working on Zero Bio and doing Flash stuff, and I, I got reasonable at it and the kids liked it the students when I made science games and stuff with you know buttons and doorways opening and you know a little bit of gun stuff but I got into the 3d modeling um because I had a little bit of a background in that and blender was free and uh, I started doing that and then I started recording myself uh, while I do that and I guess the teacher thing in me took over and uh, I sort of started teaching Blender. Um, and, uh, and my subscribers grew because I wasn't able to do music anymore. But I think uh, the young people, somewhat young, you know, teenagers, 20s, 30s, um, uh, liked my style of, of teaching Blender because there's a lot of really good 3D artists out there and they're busy. And they do some complicated stuff. And, uh, you know, I learned from them. Uh, but sometimes uh, I think people are put off by people that are really, really good. They go kind of pretty quick and um, they're a little bit intimidated and stuff. And so because I always called myself a relative beginner, um, maybe it was a little bit easier to relate to me and, and just relax and have fun. And that's what I always said. Let's not take it too serious. Let's just have some fun. And so uh, that's what I ended up doing. And of course, I've done some other stuff. You know, I still, I, I tutor students online. I write reference letters uh, for them to go to medical school. Uh, and then uh, people contact me from my website if, to do a little bit of work here and there or, you know, or uh, help them with uh, creating a game. And so I never really stopped teaching. <laughs> I stopped getting the regular paycheck. Well, I got the pension. And, uh, and I never, but I never really stopped. I guess it's, I guess it's my thing. I guess it is, you know, a music too, but, you know. And so uh, that's what I've been up to uh, when I have the time. And my other time is split, uh, not split, but <laughs> the primary thing is the kids. 
Um, but that leads us to the final thing I wanted to address, which is the photography. Now, I'm just like anybody else, um, getting into this or that, trying this or that. Um, you know, so I'm not going to say that I didn't, for a period of time, say, hey, maybe I want to play Xbox games. Yeah, that sounds like the cool thing to do. You do it, and then you go, nah, this isn't for me. Or Netflix. And I watch movies. Oh, there's so much. You do it for a couple of days and go, nah, I don't want to waste my time with this. I want to create my own stuff. I don't want to watch somebody else's creation. You know, I want to do my own thing. I want to live my own life. Um, and so, um, uh, it was really Dini that was interested in photography. She always took more care of taking pictures even with her cell phone and then was interested in, in camera stuff. And, uh, and then I was like, hmm. See, because I never really had time to smell the roses, to like see the flowers. Dini always said that too, you know. Why don't you relax, take it easy, enjoy. No, I'm too busy for that, right? And so, but that's where the photography comes in. Um, I find it forces me in a gentle way, in an enjoyable way, to relax, to see things that I wouldn't see otherwise, to appreciate things that I wouldn't appreciate and see otherwise and I'm grateful for that I really enjoy it I'm not very good at it I'll get better but I still may not be very good but I do enjoy it um, and it makes me like I said sort of walk around and appreciate the beauty of nature or architectural design a lot of things that I missed because I was so busy going back to school and being a teacher and being a musician and you know doing blender and having kids and struggling to pay my rent and my bills and losing my vehicles and uh, getting my stuff stolen and all the crap that happens in life and uh, hey I mean that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy all of those things there's probably some bad things I said in there that I didn't enjoy but you know, because I do. I live, live my life. Uh, I can live without photography, and I would have been just fine. But it came along. I jumped on the bandwagon. And I worked for, you know, I worked for some of my camera stuff. I worked very hard at 3 a.m. for the dairy farmers so I could buy myself a nice camera so I could go enjoy myself. And now it's winter time, and there's very little to shoot out here in this village environment. But I search, I found that boat, right, out in the woods. Find some train tracks. We we'll do what we can. Of course, I'm really looking forward to the summer and uh, taking you guys to Cobble Road and the various places. And I am interested in photography. Back in the old days, I was never a photographer, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But, you know, we had our Kodak cameras with film, and you'd have to bring it to Shopper's Drug Mart. Did they have those? We had to wait. We had 12 exposure, 24 now it's just it's unlimited so we can have some fun we can relax and, and just shoot whatever we want and see what turns out and we've got lightroom and all these different editing the software you know so so that's why uh i think i got into the photography and why why it stuck with me for now we'll see who knows what the next thing is um but the main thing is you know we got the kids and it's very difficult to uh to get out and do any photo shooting um you know they're with us and uh you know uh, we can you know take the odd picture here and there and that's about it um anyways that's kind of where things are at right now um we're just uh biding our time working on some stuff here so that we can uh, get into another house i think we're going to stick out in this neck of the woods we we'll go to moncton and kids will go to school uh, that'll open up some time for uh, me and Dini to do photography, music, you know, kung fu classes, whatever, you know, and uh, and get back to Ontario to visit. You know, everyone's, uh, you know, getting older and stuff, and uh, we need to, you know, rekindle some relationships. I haven't seen my brothers for a long time. 
and that'll that'll change i think as the kids get older i i'd like to have uh more of a relationship with my with my brothers and i know Deanie needs to get back to see her family too it's been 10 years we all need family you know for better for worse whatever um because that's i guess what we got and we got ourselves and you know we got to keep ourselves going and stay strong inside and uh anyways uh that's about it i think that i wanted to talk about for the time being so i hope that wasn't too boring if anybody even with me right now <laughs> go to bed see you later